Hello again, Sandwich. I'm Greg Anderson. Welcome again back into the studio here at Sandwich Community Television. We are taking a deep dive and really looking at the candidates who are running for office. And, you know, there is one race that is now contested for the first time in 12 years, and that is the race for constable. My guest today is the challenger, Candy Thompson. Welcome. Thank so you. So great to have you Good here. Good to see you. And by the way, we just found out that uh, Candy is also an Emersonian. She went to Emerson College, as did I. Yep. And about eight other people that we know in our <laughs> circle here in Sandwich. So um, uh, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, thank you. So, so tell me a little bit about, um, about you. What brings you to this race for you to become the next constable? Well, you know, I worked last election, last May, and uh, I was in the polls, and we had 40 people come all day. Why? All uncontested races. You know, the turnout was 1.3%. That's just, I was raised that voting is important. And so I looked at the races, and I noticed that this one had not been contested. And then I looked into what the job was, because it seemed sort of ancient and old-timey, and found out that there were things that a constable could do, both as a volunteer, kind of free labor, and, and just to help bodies through the town um, with, what, with the skills that I thought I could bring to this, to this job, and so I threw my hat in the ring. So tell me, there was an article um, in the Sandwich, Sandwich Enterprise which was, what really is a constable? Mm -hmm. Can you put it into your words? What is what is a constable? I'm almost embarrassed to really not know, but what does a constable do? And I know there are three of them mm -hmm. here in Sandwich, but what is the job? Well, the job, of course, is set up in colonial times, uh, which intrigued me as a history buff. And when looking into it, you know, it's evolved over the years. As, as municipalities have gotten pol police departments, professional police departments, and, you know, deputy sheriffs who serve paperwork for the courts, um, you know, the, the job has certainly shrunk. Um, but there are certain things in town statute, town regulations, that a constable can do. And so I thought, well, let's build on that. Um, you know, obviously a constable, a lot of them in this, this, this state, um, they serve papers. They're notary publics. Those are all things that a constable can do. But in the town of Sandwich, a constable can um, enforce traffic and parking regulations. So I got my mind working and, and found a way that I could help make a difference in this town through using 1958 town regulations. And I went to Taylor White and he said my reading of it was, was correct. And so, you know, I got my mind working and I thought I could help the Disabilities Committee Commission um, with its push to enforce handicap parking regulations. And, you know, certainly with my background in emergency management communication for the state of Maryland, I could help our local emergency management team with social media with outreach. And certainly when the Center for Active Living opens and it gets used as a warming shelter during a storm, um, I've got some experience in that too. So it's matching my skills to that particular job. So the, um, Bray, unpack the, um, the, the disabilities of parking. Y you know, what, what, what can you do different than what's happening right now? Well, you know, we do have regulations on the books and we have police officers who could enforce it, but they're busy. Mm -hmm. um, the town of Barnstable has parking enforcement, seasonal people uh, who do enforce handicapped parking regulations in that town. The money raised from fines, they issued 414 tickets last year. That money goes to the Disabilities Commission to help them with uh, education, to help them with outreach. Uh, if the commission needs to hire a translator for a meeting, uh, you know, that can be done, a sign language uh, expert. Those things could be done with that money. Our Disabilities Commission doesn't get any money. So everything they want to do, they have to ask. It would be nice if they had a, a small budget that they could, you know, do their, their work. 
So you're really looking at taking what could otherwise be seen as a very, um, not ho-hum, but a very silent role in a community like ours that, again, I've, I've lived here for almost 10 years. I don't know what a constable does. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like under, under your leadership, there's more visibility. There's more hands-on. Um, you know, you've talked about volunteerism, but uh, some of those are just being a good citizen and others are part of the, the, the constable role, which you see. Correct. Am I describing this correctly and fill in any gaps? Well, you're absolutely right. I could certainly do some of these things just by being the volunteer that I already am. But for example, I know how to direct traffic. I learned that as, you know, with Maryland Natural Resources Police. I'm still a reserve officer in good standing. I've taken all the training. Times when the town needs to move people on holiday weekends or whatever in the summer, I'm, a free, I'm free labor. Um, I know how to do these things. And it's just taking my knowledge and using town. I'm not expanding the role at all. I'm just using the role that's, that's right there in town regulations. What specifically in the emergency management piece do you bring as an example uh, or, or as experience to this role? Well, I was part of the Maryland Emergency Management Agency, MEMA, um, system because I worked for Maryland Natural Resources Police and the state park system as their spokesperson. Um, during times of, of tragedy, of, of disaster, um, I, I can point to in 2016 and 2018, Ellicott City, Maryland, which is just south of Baltimore, had flash flooding that killed people. Mm. I was part of that team that got the message out where to go to find loved ones, um, where police were looking for victims, uh, where you could go if your housing was washed out. We had tabletop exercises that we had done ahead of time so that we, and we train every year, so that we knew what to do and what to tell people and what to tell the media. Mm -hmm. So we did briefings every two hours, I believe, on both of those tragedies so that people knew what, what was coming. And here in Sandwich, you know, we have wind, we have storms, we have, you know, all of these things that, that, that happen. You really see yourself as being uh, a part of the solution in those moments of tragedy. I think that's, that's a correct way to put it. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot. Um, Maryland, during my tenure with the, the, the police, we had 90 boating fatalities. I was at most of those, um, you know, because there were search areas for victims and all that kind of thing. I worked with the Coast Guard very closely on boating accidents and boating tragedies. So those are the kinds of, of things I know how to do. When you talk about, um and I saw in the, the Sandwich Enterprise the, the write-up that they did on you. Um, you used the word wanting to modernize the job. Can you explain that to me? Modernize in that um, I've read all the town bylaws and the regulations and the traffic. We're not doing that now with the job of constable. We could be doing that job now with the role of constable. That's the modernization. It's just bringing the office up to speed. When you look at the, um, the, 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 your competition, you know, you are going up against a, a constable uh, who has never been challenged or hasn't been challenged in 12 years. Um, there's a little like, well, he's always been there. You know, <laughs> he's the guy we know. And how do you compete against that? Well, you know, it's, it's, I don't think of myself as competing against Jerry or being against Jerry and I. I'm being for sandwich. You know, I said that I, my role would be to serve people, not papers. Um, he's had the job. He said in the enterprise that he didn't have much to do. I would like to have a lot to do. I would like organizations to call. I would like, if you need a message, if the, a town body, a volunteer board needs help, I've got communication skills and can help with that message. It's, it's, I understand, you know, Jerry has a real background. I mean, his family, his dad was, a, his uh, ancestor was, a, was, a, was, was the first constable. Yeah. As a history buff, that really, I didn't know that, but that, that's fascinating. But we could do something with this job. We have a small town staff. 
we rely on volunteers to help out. And that's where I see my role. When you look at the, um, that, that institutional knowledge, you know, the, the, let's just take that, that voter out there, that neighbor of ours who says, yeah, I don't really, we've got so much transition going on. You know, we've got, you know, we're moving the town offices. We've got this bond issue. We've got the new superintendent. We've, let's just stay with what we have. Institutional knowledge may actually help us. What do you say to that person who, who raises that in the context of, of this role? Well, institutional knowledge is, is absolutely valuable, invaluable. Um, but if you don't do anything with that knowledge, and Mr. Nye says he doesn't do anything, then what good is the institutional knowledge? Good answer. Have you been in, in the media before? I mean, I you've think... got really good answers, and <laughs> you know when to stop as well. Let's talk a little bit about your background as it relates to journalism, mm -hmm. and you know, and I think there's something there. I, you know, I'm impressed with your background, uh, background as a journalist and as a as a, a media relations person, because I believe so strongly in messaging and how we message things, mm -hmm. regardless of what we do in our world and with our jobs. How do you take your journalism background and your ability to write and speak and communicate and translate that to this job? I think there's a lot of places where Sandwich could do a better job of communicating with its citizens. Um, the storm that we had in January. I was just going to say, give me an example. That's, that's the one. Yeah. The warming shelter was there. It wasn't open very long. It was, you know, it was done sort of quickly. Um, people didn't know about it. There's got to be a better way to let people know. And I, and I think that in their hot wash, in their debriefing, they figured that part of it out. But we do have Twitter. We do have Facebook. You know, we do have ways, but it's got to be fast and it's got to be always being updated. Uh, those kinds of things. An example of the town doing it well was the COVID messaging. Okay. You know, the fire chief and the health officer both doing their, this is what's going on, very well done, professional. We need to do more of that kind of thing. You know, we're a town s small, 20,000, yeah. but everybody's savvy, everybody's plugged in. We have to plug in to the plug in and get do a better job of that. Um, I'm working with the town right now on the, you know, returning the boardwalk planks. Okay. Um, I wrote the press release for that. Uh, we're doing outreach with them. We're going to make this run. Those are the kinds of things, just smoothing out the process and, and using something that the town already has. Yeah. So to have a constable that is actually, you know, in that function, but also that, Again, that media relations, that messaging, you have a, an eye towards that. Um, you're, you're a writer. I would also say you and your husband, Bob, are the, I don't know how, there must be a number here, how, when the last time there was a married couple that are both on the ballot for different, for, <laughs> for different roles. Um, what type of, and you're both journalists too. Yes. So that's just a bizarre um, <laughs> a image in my mind. You're both running for campaigns and you're both journalists, but um, how has that been with the two of you both saying, I gotta, I gotta, Though he's not contested. They're, he's not. It, that's right. Yeah, he's, he's going for, for real. He's coasting. Life. He's coasting. <laughs> All right. I, I like that. Um, when we look at the town, just as you being a member of this community, um, what, and I'm asking all the candidates this, um, not because it's the same question for everybody, but I'm just really curious. What do you think are the top issues that people are facing, concerned about, um, that is driving them to want to go and cast a vote for one person or another. What are those issues in your mind that are really forefront in our neighbors' minds? Well, I came to this town because of its history, because my family has been here. I want to see this town grow and, and grow responsibly. I, I think the question of growth where the next tax dollar is going to come from, the, you know, the, the tax base growing. I think that's important. I think some of these issues in the schools um, are important. Uh, we need to have strong schools. We need to have good roads. We need to have services that attract more businesses and more families. We need a younger uh, town. Yeah. We need better housing for our workers. I think those are all things that people care about. 
and then using really well what we've already paid for, you know, keeping town hall up to, to specs, uh, making sure that um, our buildings have good roofs and boilers and the things that make a town, you know, if, if it just looks like Legoland and the front looks great and the back is falling apart, that's no way to, yeah. to operate. Candy, let me ask you this. If I um, am, uh, all of these people are going to the ballots and I'm standing there in, in my booth and I've got my pen in my hand, give me the argument. Why am I going to vote for you? Because I'm going to serve people. Because I'm going to, you call me up and say I have this issue and if it's a communications, I'm going to give you a hand. I, you know, I reached out to the Friends of the Sandwich Boardwalk to sharpen their message. I work with the Friends of the Library um, and work with my husband, uh, you know, on some of their projects. I'm a member of the Arts Alliance. I belong to Sandwich for All. These are things, and the messaging part is, is all part of that, in making for healthy outfits in this town that can you know, put, the, put our best foot forward. And so I'm a communicator and that's what I do. And I'm asking for folks to give me a chance. Candy, thank you so much. You bet, thank you. I can tell you're an Emersonian. You know, you've just got that TV presence. Well, and you, with the secret handshake too. Yes, you scared me with the secret <laughs> handshake when you came in. Like, how do I not know the secret handshake? Um, thank you very much thank for you. being here. You know, our goal here at Sandwich Community Television is to bring you the most information that we possibly can as it relates to these candidates and this race. An informed voter is the best voter, as long as you show up. So Thursday, May 5th, cast your vote. And um, I appreciate you for being here, or I appreciate you being here. That's an Emersonian slip. <laughs> um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. The views expressed in this program are the views of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the SCTV staff or board of directors. <laughs>